Hey y'all, welcome to another vlog. It is Thursday today. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon, 1245, somewhere around there. I don't know exactly. Um, and I'm about to run some errands in town. I need to go by the post office and go to the grocery store to get some food. They are tearing down the McDonald's by my house, which sucks for me because I get like 80% of my food from there. But it did kind of motivate me to start cooking for myself more than I have been. Just because I wanna get a little bit more variety in my diet. Um, I'm feeling a lot better now. I'm feeling a lot more like I can cook for myself again. I'm not so depressed anymore. So yeah, I wanna start cooking. I wanna get some steaks and surprise, surprise, I'm gonna get some avocados and make some guacamole for myself. So I do wanna start slowly introducing a few more foods back into my diet. I'm not going crazy with it because um, I am still like kind of carb phobic and I don't wanna gain weight. But I have been talking to my therapist about this and she thinks it's a good idea for me to add back in like one thing that I think I can tolerate maybe per week. So I'm gonna start with avocados because I have still been able to eat guacamole. I like the texture, I like the taste. So we're gonna make some of that today. Um, after that, I'll probably go with mushrooms, which I also eat occasionally, but we'll see. We'll see. I would like to transition into a more paleo style diet, but like a low carb paleo style diet. I know I said that I was going to do carnivore forever, but I have a few concerns and let me show you one of them. I've got to move my lights back in the kitchen because there's just not enough light in here to vlog without supplemental lighting. But um, just for the moment, hopefully you can see this. So the other night I went out with my date. We went to see fireworks um, at the Sunshine Fireworks Show, which was amazing by the way one of the best ones I've ever seen and while we were there I stepped in a hole okay that was like obscured by grass you could not see it I'm just walking along and all of a sudden I'm surprised my ankle didn't snap and I fell to the ground on my on my knees and my wrists and it hurt really bad and so I have this gnarly bruise look at that it looks horrible I look like I've been in a fight and my knees are all bruised up too which is why I'm not wearing shorts today um, so yeah, I am concerned that I bruise easily and I think it might be from lack of potassium, which I tried to keep up with my potassium through uh, taking supplemental electrolytes, but I've always been the kind of person that I don't hold on to potassium very well. My mom had the same thing and I don't know if there's a genetic component to it, but I just do really poorly at like my body holding on to and processing potassium for some reason. I've always had like leg cramps and stuff, even when I wasn't eating carnivore or low carb. So when I am eating carnivore and low carb, it's even harder for me. Um, I was doing really well when I was on spironolactone because it's potassium sparing. And I'm going to see if I can go back on that now that I am not planning on having children anymore. Which by the way, I'm not planning on having children anymore. I have dealt with that. I have mourned that loss. I have realized that that's not going to happen for me. And uh, it's also something I'm working on in therapy, but we can talk about that another time. Um, for now, I'm gonna try to eat some avocados with my steak, so let's go to the grocery store and go shopping. Oh, and by the way, I guess I should do a short explanation for anybody who wasn't watching me a long time ago. Um, spironolactone is a medication given to women with PCOS to help with uh, hair loss. It's like an androgen blocker. So when I was on it before, my hair was growing back like really well, and, but I had to stop taking it whenever I started trying for a baby um, because it causes severe birth defects and you cannot take it while you're pregnant. So I'm gonna see if I can get into a doctor around here and see if I can get back on that now. An outfit of the day is nothing special at all. Just my Old Crow Medicine Show shirt and some black leggings. Um, these leggings are actually getting baggy in the knees and I really need to get some new ones, but I'm trying to hold off for as long as possible because I feel like I'm in between sizes right now. So this is what I'm wearing today just to go run my errands and do the stuff around the house I need to do. Oh, and one more thing before we leave y'all, I have taken to carrying a tiny purse. I really like this. I got this for when Lodane and I went to see The Cure because you can only have a small bag to take into like these arenas with you and stuff. So I got it for concerts, but I've been carrying it like every day and I've really liked it. It's like a lot easier to deal with than my big giant backpack that I used to carry around everywhere. So here's how it looks. I just do it like over the shoulder. Uh, and it goes with pretty much any of my outfits because it's just a black little bag, just over the shoulder bag. Another thing I really like about it is that I am very prone to losing things and leaving things behind when I'm out drinking. So far with the guy that I'm dating on two different dates, one time I left my purse and we had to go back and find it. One time I lost my phone somewhere downtown. Luckily we did go back and find it. 
but uh, yeah, I gotta be really careful. So I like this bag because I can sling it over my shoulder and just leave it there all night and I know I won't lose my bag at least. Um, with my backpack, I always take it off and then I'll end up leaving it in a bar or something. God knows, I'm just terrible about that when I've had a couple drinks. Um, and then when we went to see fireworks, this bag, actually, I did leave this bag behind. Somehow I took this bag off and lost it in a field, but we found it. Success. All right, I swear I'm leaving now. Okay, so the first stop I have to make is actually to get gas because I am basically on empty at this point. I've got no gas. Let's go get some. Okay, here we go. I still don't have a gas cap, y'all. I really need to get myself one. We're gonna choose and let it 288 a gallon. And I set the little thing on the gas so I can just sit here and let it fill up. And it's gonna take quite a bit of gas because I am completely empty. Not too bad, only $29.65. Okay, now we are on our way to the post office. I wanna do the post office first before I hit the grocery store so I don't have my groceries sitting on the hot car. I don't think I have anything at the post office, but I have not checked it since I've been back from Atlanta. So I need to go down there and just make sure. Like, I cannot believe I used to be afraid to drive. Now that I have my own car, I love driving. Like, I'm like, where can I drive to next? And after having driven through like Atlanta and Birmingham and other large cities, Denver and everything that I've driven through um like it's nothing to me especially to drive around Arkansas or like I feel like I could drive anywhere except for maybe places like New York I think I'd still be a little bit nervous about that um you know big 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 cities but as far as most of the cities that I'm going to be traveling to for shows and stuff like I'm just not nervous about it at all in fact I really enjoy it although it does get tiring after you know days and days and days on the road obviously but I still enjoy taking road trips so there are more of those in my future for sure. I'm at the post office so let's go in and see if there's anything in there. Okay, let's see. Oh, got a few things in here. Right. Oh, and a few slips I need to go to the front for. I ended up having six packages in there which I was not expecting so uh, thank you guys to whoever sent me those and Lodane gave me this Ikea bag which I realized is going to be a great way for me to carry packages and stuff and even groceries up my stairs. So I'm going to put my packages in here. Thank you, Lodane, for the Ikea bag. Okay, perfect. I've got my packages in there and then I'll also be able to fit um, probably all my groceries in there and carry everything up at once. Do not judge my trunk, y'all. I have not cleaned out my car since I got back from the road trip. We're gonna have to do that in another vlog soon. All right, y'all, now I'm on my way down to the grocery store, which is just where I got gas, so I'm going back there, but I really didn't wanna buy steak and stuff before I had to come to the post office because I didn't know how long it was gonna take. Sometimes it, there's a line and it takes a while. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go get some groceries for me to actually cook. All right, y'all, I'm just going into this little grocery store because I don't want to go into Walmart because it sucks. So instead I'm going to Harps. Let's go see what they've got. Should I buy myself flowers? I think I should. $6.99 for that. That's a pretty bouquet too. Ooh, I'm gonna get that for myself, y'all. All right, we've got avocados here. So the recipe that I'm gonna use to make guacamole I believe I need three avocados, but these are huge. So I think I'm just gonna get two. That one feels okay. And then I want them that are kind of ripe. That one feels pretty ripe. Okay, we're gonna get two of those and I'm gonna get a couple of um, Roma tomatoes over here too. I'm gonna get two Roma tomatoes. I do not like tomatoes, but I like them in guacamole. So hopefully that'll be all right. And then I need a red onion and some garlic. Red onions don't look so hot. But hopefully I can find one that's all right. Here's a little one that's okay. I get that. Y'all, all they had for minced garlic were these giant jars. So I've got enough minced garlic to last me literally the rest of my life. And yes, I am too lazy to chop up my own garlic, so I always get this. Now I just need a lime. You find a nice one here. Okay, that's good enough, and that should be everything I need. Okay, I have checked out, and I will have to show you guys the meat I bought when we get back home because there were just too many people in that meat section for me to film over there. I gotta get this stuff in the Ikea bag and I can't do it with one hand. I'm back home and let me tell you, I am not ready for these Southern summers again. Oh my God. Out there, I was out there for literally five minutes loading and unloading the car and I'm pouring sweat and my face is melting off. Whew, it is humid. Okay, so let me show you what I got. And by the way, this Ikea bag, fantastic. I carried everything up in one trip. So thank you so much, Lodane. 
that was an awesome gift. So I love going to Harps for their meat because they have like the best meat selection and they have like all these interesting cuts and stuff. So I saw these and I had to have them. They are peppered steak fingers. Check that out. Peppered freaking steak fingers. I'm gonna cook these in the air fryer. I think they will be so good, especially with like some guac on the side. So yeah, really looking forward to these. I probably bought too much meat. I might have to freeze some of this. Then the, these strip steaks were on manager special. Um, they were only $8.67 for two of them. So I will probably cook these first since they're the closest to like going bad. Um, the date on them is to sell by tomorrow. So I'll probably cook these today. And then finally, I got my favorite food in the world, ribeye steaks. I bought two of these really nice looking ribeyes and these have until the 11th until I have to cook them. So they should be fine for a little while. And then you saw everything else that I bought. So I'm going to put all this stuff away and, uh, then I'm probably going to do some cleaning before I cook. So one thing that I do is when I put the meat in the fridge, I stack it in order of what needs to be cooked first. So I put those manager special steaks on first. Then underneath that is the steak fingers and underneath that is the ribeye. That way when I'm ready to cook, I can just grab whatever's on top. Y'all, how could I forget the flowers I bought myself? The, whenever I was checking out on the receipt, it says a crazy daisy bouquet. Oh, it says it here, crazy daisy seven stem. Um, I thought it was beautiful. I love the colors. So we're gonna put this in a vase and put it on the table to bring me some cheer into my life today. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna cut the stems a little bit. And we may have to cut them more because sometimes the stems on these bouquets are too long and it looks ridiculous in my vase. So I'm gonna try my best here and we'll see how it looks. I'm just gonna try it out. Oh yeah, I think that'll be about right. I'm gonna set that aside and put some water in here. So on my quest to learn how to love and accept myself and realize that I have self-worth, which has been a long, hard journey, uh, one of the things that I like to do now is to buy myself flowers because I think that's an act of self-love for me because I love flowers and um, I never got any really. Um, I used to tell Andrew how much I love flowers and he still never got them for me. I just don't think he cared enough, honestly. Uh, but I care enough about myself, so I'm going to buy flowers for myself. So that's another thing that I am working on in therapy right now. It's pretty much the primary thing that I'm working on in therapy right now is self-love, self-worth, and identity. So one of the things that I'm doing, I hope you can hear me over this water. One of the things that I'm doing in therapy is I have to write down lists of everything that I like. So like I, I literally have to sit down and write down like, number one, I like tarot. Number two, I like growing houseplants and like things that I like that I didn't get from somebody else. Things that, that were not things that Andrew liked that I like absorbed into myself. Things that I truly like. So I'm trying to explore that, um, which is, and it's difficult for me sometimes because I do have identity disturbance as part of my BPD. So having my own identity is not easy for me, but it's something that I'm working really hard on. And I feel like I am making progress. I feel like I was even making progress on that before Andrew left. I was kind of finding my own way with my witchcraft and my herbalism and stuff. Um, those are things that I love. Those are not things that I got from him or anybody else. Although, you know, my mom was an herbalist, so I did kind of get it from her, but not because I was trying to absorb her identity, but because it's something that I truly love and is important to me. Um, so I do that every day in my journal. I sit down and I write down the things that I like, or I revisit a previous list and add to it. I just, I work on that every day. But the other thing, the new thing that I've added in as of yesterday's therapy session is to write down my values. And this has been very difficult for me to sit down and think about what I truly find, what I truly believe is a value for me. Um, I'm struggling with it a lot, honestly. There are some things that I know are values for me and other things I'm not so sure and I have to really think about and explore. Um, so I feel like it's something that's gonna take me a long time to really get this down and really understand what my true values are without any external input. So anyway, that's uh, in a nutshell. I just thought I'd take a break from filling this up and tell you what I'm uh, working on for myself right now. <laughs> so uh, I think that's enough water. Let's put the plant food in. I still don't like having a clear vase, but um, it's all right for a couple days usually. Oh, and I learned that you're supposed to take the leaves off the stems from like the bottoms of the stems so that they don't go into the water. 
um, because that's what makes it all gross. So yeah, I'm gonna try to do that after I put the plant food in. But overall, I feel like I'm making good progress on my identity work. Um, it's something I've been working on for a while and something I continue to work on. Oh my God, that is falling off of there. Oh, look how pretty the purple is. I love that. But part of your identity is also your personal values. And that's something that I really have to examine and explore and think about. Oh, shoot. I dropped a yellow crazy daisy. I'm a work in progress and I feel like I'm doing pretty well considering everything I've been through. Um, I'm, I feel like getting out there and doing things with other people, making friends, maintaining friendships and relationships, which is something I've never been able to do before and I am doing now. Um, it's really been great for my self-worth and my self-esteem. I'm already making plans for the upcoming weekend and week. Uh, for example, tomorrow night I'm going out to have dinner with my friend Sarah. Saturday night I've got a date with a guy I'm dating. And then next week I'm going back to Oklahoma to see Lodane. Yay! And I'm probably going to stay the night with her and we're going to do some fun Oklahoma stuff. And then I've got to get in touch with my friend Abby because we need to go have coffee soon. So I feel like uh, I have things to look forward to in my life and it makes it so much less depressing. And it's so wonderful to like share things with other people which is something that I have been missing for so long you know and it really like I see how much I was missing that and how badly it was affecting my mental health over all those years when it was just me and Andrew and nobody else and that was not healthy at all okay enough about mental health let's go put these uh, flowers on the table and then I'm gonna clean up and we can make guacamole okay here they are on the table don't they look so pretty I love them I love all the colors. These are not natural colors, I don't believe. I believe a lot of these were dyed this color, <laughs> but they're still really pretty. I gotta move this cooler out of the way, which is still full, oh my God. I haven't cleaned it out. I got a whole bunch of beer <laughs> and water and Cokes. But anyway, when we went out to do fireworks, um, this is all leftover stuff that I need to put in the fridge and clean this cooler out. I also still have to return this to Serbia dress that didn't fit, but I have ordered a corset and a wide belt, and I'm gonna see if that will make it look better before I return it. If not, I do think it's a size too big, um, but so if not, if that doesn't make it look okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and return it, and maybe I'll try it in a smaller size. Okay, I cleaned up the kitchen pretty well, not perfect, but enough. And uh, I have washed all of my fruits here. I have my two avocados, my two Roma tomatoes, my lime, which now I'm thinking I probably should have bought two limes, but I do have some lemon juice in there I can add if I need to. And uh, then I have my little onion here. So I'm gonna do the avocados last. I'm gonna start by chopping up the two Roma tomatoes. And this is just the way I make guacamole. There's lots of other ways. Some people like to add jalapeno to it, I don't. I just like red onion, uh, tomato, avocado, and lime, and garlic. That's how I like to make mine. It's just a matter of preference, I think. So I am going to attempt to chop these tomatoes up. God help me. I'm not very good at chopping tomatoes. Uh, I am gonna clean the seeds out. Romas don't have a ton of seeds, but I still like to clean like the slimy seed stuff out of the middle. And I just run it under the water and like scrape that out. My knives are super sharp because I have not used this. I bought a new knife block when I moved here and I have not used this very much. So my knives are pretty sharp and this should work very well. So I'm just gonna dice these up. I like very small pieces of tomato because like I said, I'm not a huge fan of tomatoes in general, but uh, I do like to add them to my guacamole for some reason. So I'm just gonna dice them up like this, very fine and small. If you're wondering how I'm going to eat this guacamole, I am just going to eat it plain. Um, I really like guacamole. It's one of the only green foods that I can really tolerate at this moment in my life. And avocados are very high in potassium, so I'm lucky. And I'm just going to eat it plain with my steaks. And then we'll see how I tolerate this, and if I'm good with this, then I'll add in another food, like I'm thinking uh, mushrooms is probably gonna be next. Things that aren't carby and things that I know I like is where I'm gonna start. And then, you know, I may never be able to add anything else besides guacamole and mushrooms, and if I can't, I can't. Um, the thought of eating something like broccoli or like some strongly flavored green vegetable just repulses me right now. As always, never do what I do. Always consult your own doctor about your own diet. Never take advice from somebody on YouTube.
All right, now I'm gonna do the uh, onion. So I just bought this little small onion. I think this will be just enough for this batch of guacamole here. Y'all, I just realized my camera recorded none of my onion chopping shenanigans, but I did chop up this uh, red onion. So we're gonna add it to the bowl, okay? I did a piss poor job of chopping it, but you know, I'm not, I haven't chopped vegetables in months. I don't remember what I'm doing. So this is what we've got so far. And also I'm crying from the onion juice because it was strong as hell, Woo. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the avocados. These are some freaking huge ass avocados. So the way I chop avocados is like this basically. I just chop it all the way around or cut it all the way around and then twist and open it up. And then you can take the pit out if you're lucky somehow. Pry it out, don't hurt yourself though. Woo. All right, um, and then I'm going to peel the outer skin off and then we will chop this up. Once again, I am no expert at this, um, so I'm doing my best. Don't be too hard on me. Ooh, that one just came right off. Oh, that was satisfying. Yes, I love that. Okay, and I'm just gonna chop this up into chunks. It doesn't have to be anything uniform or anything because I'm just gonna mash this all up in the bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna put these avocados into the bowl. Oh no, I have another avocado. What am I doing? I gotta cut this one, hold on. I'll be right back. I got the second avocado done and now I'm gonna do the lime um, and sprinkle the lime juice in there. I really think I should have gotten more than one lime, but we're gonna do one and see how it goes. Man, I love the smell of fresh lime. Ooh, I just squirted myself in the face with it. That's nice. Get a nice squirt of lime juice right to the old eyeball. So I'm just gonna squeeze as much of this juice out of here as I can into our bowl and then do the other side. And hopefully that'll be enough to keep it from going brown. But if I feel like it's not enough, I'll add a little bit of lemon juice in there. You know what I need is a juicer. I've never had a juicer before because I don't drink juice, but now I'm thinking it might be nice for lime juice and lemon juice. Okay, unfortunately the potato masher that I would normally use for this did not make the trip <laughs> because I thought, I don't need that. What am I gonna mash, meat? So I'm gonna use this spoon, which is gonna be very ineffective, but you know what, we'll get there. We'll get there in the end. I also don't have a food processor or anything else I could possibly use that would combine this, so. Go ahead and make fun of me if you will, damn it. I'm gonna make guacamole out of this with a giant spoon. I'll show you. I'll show you all. Okay, let's use a fork. <laughs> I think mashing with a fork is gonna be a lot easier than that giant spoon. I also don't think that the avocados were as ripe as I like them to be, but um, I just had to deal with what was there at the store, so uh, we're gonna make this work. It's gonna be chunky though, a chunky boy. Okay, look at that. Oh my God, that looks so good. But I just realized that I forgot to put garlic in it. So I'm gonna add the garlic and uh, a little salt too, and then stir that up. But I think it looks pretty good. I know the bowl looks a little gross, but I am not gonna dirty up another bowl just to make it look Pinterest pretty, okay? This is the bowl it's gonna live in. So I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of minced garlic in there. Maybe I'll do a little bit more. I like garlic. And then I'm gonna put about a half teaspoon of salt. All right, and then I'm gonna stir all that up, y'all, and I've got guacamole that's good enough for me. Maybe not good enough for thee, but good enough for me. <laughs> it's, you know what, we're not even gonna call it, call it guacamole, okay? We're gonna call it avocado salad, because that's what they call it at my favorite Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Oop, that one needs to be smushed a little bit more. There's one of these avocados that just wasn't very ripe and it was hard to mash, but the other one was pretty good. Okay, so I like my guacamole ice cold. Kids, I know you like your guacamole ice cold. Tell me if you get that reference. Bonus points if you do. And uh, I'm gonna put the lid on this and put it in the fridge and let it chill while I cook my steaks. Okay, so I'm gonna make these steaks in the air fryer and I'm making these strip steaks that I got on manager special today. So I'm gonna open them up, put them in the air fryer and then season them. Or I might season the top half here and then the bottom half in the air fryer. You've seen me season steaks a million times before and you'll see me do it a million times more <laughs> if you watch this channel. But these strip steaks look really good. They have a nice like thick strip of fat on them which is what I'm looking for. I eat a very high fat diet. 
um, because I don't eat very many carbs at all, so my body has to use fat for fuel. And so you need a lot of fat in your diet. Okay, that's good enough on that. So let's plop them in the air fryer. Okay, so thank you to the person who suggested that I turn my air fryer sideways because that actually does work. <laughs> and now it opens on the counter. And I guess I was just too dumb to figure that out. Um, here we go, I'm gonna put this first one down. Put this next one down and then I will season this side. And this will be enough food for me for tonight and probably tomorrow as well since I am going out to dinner with Sarah tomorrow. Um, I'll probably eat one of these for like breakfast slash lunch and one for dinner tonight. Okay, we're gonna put this up on grill. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm actually gonna do 400. And I'm gonna do 20 minutes to start and I'll turn it after 10. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Let's see how our strip steaks are doing. Ooh, looking good, y'all. I am going to flip these over and cook them for another 10 minutes. All right, I think our steaks are done. Oh my God, the smoke that comes out, but they look delicious and I'm starving. So I'm gonna make myself a plate now. Okay, y'all, here's my dinner all plated up. The steak looks delicious. The guac is so good. I tried it, it is fantastic. So I'm gonna eat my dinner because I'm super hungry and then maybe we'll open some packages. Okay, I wanted to open a couple of those packages that I got from the post office earlier. It's getting kind of late, so I'm not gonna open all of them today, but I will open like two of them and then we'll do the rest of them in another vlog. So I'm just gonna reach in here and grab something and let's see what we have here so um this doesn't say who it's from but it does look like it's from another country <laughs> because they wrote america on it <laughs> that's cute um so it's just a brown package let's open it up and see what's inside oh it looks like it's a lovely letter y'all um, let's see, this is from, uh, Ellie. Ellie, thank you so much for this lovely letter. I truly appreciate it. I'm so happy that I could, um, give you a little bit of inspiration with your PCOS journey. I know it's a very, very difficult disease to live with. It is not fun. It's, it's fucking horrible, and I'm so sorry that you have to deal with it. Um, but I'm glad I could give you a little bit of help, and, um, thank you for the beautiful letter. I truly appreciate that. Okay, number two. Oh, I took out, I took out too many. Okay, this is, I don't know who this is from. This is another little brown package, so let's um, open it up and see. My battery's about to die. I hope I can make it through this segment. Okay, the camera decided to die right after I said that. So, <laughs> anyway, this is from, um, let me see, Nikki Sue. You are a shining light that is greatly loved. Thank you for making our days sweeter for me, but also all of your subscribers and supporters in spirit. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Nikki Sue. Um, let's see what we got here. Aww, <laughs> it's a plant prescription pin. Look at that. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. And a, I can't tell what this is because the sticker's blocking it, but it looks like it's another pin. Okay, hold on, we're just gonna take it out of the package to see it. I thought I could pull the sticker off, but that wasn't working. It is a, oh my gosh, it's a snail with like a little athame in its little mouth. Oh my God, y'all, look at that. That's freaking adorable. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to put these on my bag. It's so cute, thank you so much. And there's one more little thing here. Oh, this looks like a little pouch, a little velvet pouch, but it's got something inside. Let's see, what is inside? Oh, another pin! Hang on, I need to overthink about it. <laughs> it's a pin that says, hang on, I need to overthink about it. I mean, yeah, that's that pretty much describes me and my brain. <laughs> Thank you so much for these lovely pins, uh, Nikki Sue. I really like these. Um, I love putting pins on my backpack and stuff or my purse, so yeah, thank you. Now, I there were two gifts that I got that I opened up in a vlog that 
I did when Andrew was here that I never published because he like left me the next day. So I got a lot of beautiful stickers from Holly and Matthew. So thank you so much for those stickers. They are over there in my sticker pile and many of them will be going on the herb cabinet eventually. And I also got the t-shirt that had the queen card on it. That one didn't have a note to say who it was from. So if you got me that, I did receive it. And thank you so much. It's my favorite night shirt now. I wear it like every night. I love it. It's a really nice shirt. Okay, and we have a little bit of time left, so I'm gonna open one more. Um, this looks like also an Amazon package. And this is from, um, this is also from Nikki Sue. Thank you so much. Another package from Nikki Sue. You are too kind. So it's got a couple of things inside it. Um, it was the same message that she put on the other one. That's why I didn't read it. Um, this, not sure what's in here. Another little baggie. Oh, that's cute too. I like the polka dots. And inside is, oh my God. This is so freaking cute, y'all. It's bacon and egg earrings. Look at that. Bacon and egg earrings. That's adorable. I don't, my ears are not currently pierced, okay? They're, they were pierced, but the holes grew up. But I do intend to get them re-pierced very soon. Uh, probably when I go back to get like a bridge piercing, um, I'm going to go ahead and just have them do my ears at the same time. So I will be wearing these. I'm going to put them in my jewelry uh, storage. Thank you so much for that. That's adorable. I do want to get my Labre pierced as well as my bridge, but um, the thing about that is you can't do things with your mouth for several weeks, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you can't kiss and make out and stuff and like, I'm at a point in my life where that's very important to me. So I'm gonna wait a little bit. Oh, this is a wall hanging. Oh, this is a wall hanging to put pins on, I think. Is that what that is? Pin, buttons, wall decoration? I think so. Look how pretty that is. So some, like some of the pins, if I don't wanna put them on my backpack for whatever reason, I can put them on here and hang it on the wall. I love that idea. Thank you so much, Nikki Sue. That is so freaking cool. I love uh, all your gifts and the beautiful letter that I got as well. Thank you guys, I truly appreciate that. Now I do have a couple more down there to open. There's three more down there to open, but I'm running out of space on my memory card, so I will have to do those in the next vlog because I wanna give you guys a Sea Monkeys update real quick. And a puppers update. Look at the pups, each with their little toy on the couch. This is so freaking cute, man. <laughs> They're adorable. They just got done with their playtime after dinner. Okay, I really hope you guys are gonna be able to see this, but can you see my aqua dragon swimming around in there? And it's time to feed them too, so I'm gonna take them in the kitchen and feed them. Okay, so I've been keeping their food in this little drawer right here, and I just give them one little spoonful of this every two days, usually. Two to three days, but I've been doing it every two days. So I'm just gonna scoop this out. And there's like a lot of food in here. And then we're just gonna pour it. I usually I take this lid off, but I've only got one hand, hold on. All right, now we're gonna pour it in, dump it in. There you go, little sea monkeys, eat up. Okay, I don't know if you can see them better or worse now. Oh, there, there, you can see them swimming around. It's, it's, try, it's having a really hard time focusing, but yeah, they're going up to get the food now. So they are doing really well. Somehow I've managed to keep them alive. Well, y'all, that's gonna be it for today's vlog. Thank you for joining me for a mundane afternoon and evening in my life. I'm about to go clean up the kitchen and do the dishes from dinner. And then I'm gonna go edit this vlog and get it ready to publish tomorrow. And I will see you hopefully tomorrow with another one. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Bye.